Hello and welcome to Newsfeed on Trust TV. My name is Dr. Yakubu Zala, bringing you trending stories that people are talking about and sharing around the globe today, and also their opinions on such issues. Federal government imposes levy on transactions above 10,000 naira on OPE, money points, and others. Presidential spokesman Ajuri Ingalale proceeds on indefinite leave of absence. No guarantee of lower prices, says NNPCL. EFCC returns $180,300, 54 cars recovered from Fort Stars to Canada. Now, top on what's trending, President Bola Tinubu has broken his silence on the increase in the price of PMS, popularly known as petrol. Tinubu, who addressed Nigerians living in China on Friday, said the petrol price hike and other reforms by his administration are part of an overall strategy to set Nigeria on the path of economic growth. Nigeria is going through reforms and we are taking very bold and unprecedented decisions. For example, you might have been hearing from home in the last few days about fuel prices, presidential spokesman Ajiri Ingalali quoted Tinubu saying, what is the critical part to get us there if we cannot take hard decisions to pave the way for a country that is blessed and so talented? The more you want everything free, it will become more expensive and long delayed to achieve meaningful development, he added. Now responding to that, someone said, but you use that hard decision, take by new private jets. Another said, I'm proud of him, sir. Some people are still seeing money to do a Joe. You really need to do something about it. Another person said, thank you, Mr. President, we must learn by force. Now, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, on Saturday said there is no guarantee of a lower price as it is set to begin lifting petrol from the Dangote refinery. NNPCL will reportedly commence lifting petrol from the refinery on September 15th. In a statement by its spokesman, Olufemi Shoneye, the company said the pricing of petroleum products from any refinery, including the Dangote Refinery Limited, is determined by global market forces. Shoneye, NNPC's chief corporate communications officer, said that lower prices associated with domestic refining of the products in the country are not guaranteed. Now, someone asked, if federal government has agreed to sell crude to Dangote in Nara and Dangote to sell refined oil products in Nara, why can't we get guaranteed low prices? Another said, how do you explain to us that the price of an imported petrol will be the same with a local produced petrol? Do these people even rate us at all? Another said, then the high price of fuel is deliberate to suffer Nigerians. Now, next on what's trending, the Edo state government has postponed school resumption due to rising petrol prices and challenges faced by parents and guardians. Schools in most parts of Nigeria are set to resume on Monday, September 9th. In a statement signed by the Permanent Ministry of Education, Ojo Akin Longe, the resumption of all public and private schools has been postponed until further notice. The statement read in part, an official statement from the government has directed that schools remain closed due to the tension from the recent increase in fuel prices and the challenges faced by parents and guardians. Now responding to that, someone said, government is playing with the future of Nigerian youths. Another person said, why not provide transport for them, Mr. Governor? You were part of the economic team of the last administration and also witnessed the passing of PIA bill. So you can't tell us that you were not aware of the end result. Another opined, you sure say no be because of election, because in my view, this bill is not coming down soon. The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has urged President Bola Tinubu to use his leadership position and good office to direct the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, to immediately reverse what it described as the illegal and unconstitutional increase in the pump price of premium motor spirit or petrol across its retail outlets. In a statement by SERAP's Deputy Director, Kolawole Olua Dare, on Sunday, it also urged Tinubu to direct the Aswini General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice, Lati Fagbe Misan, and appropriate anti-corruption agencies to probe the allegations of corruption and mismanagement in the NNPCL, including the spending of the reported $300 million bailout funds collected from the federal government in August 2024 and the $6 billion debt it owes suppliers. Seraph said, 
suspected perpetrators of alleged corruption and mismanagement in the NNPCL should face prosecution as appropriate if there is sufficient admissible evidence and any proceeds of corruption should be fully recovered. Now, an accident said, this setup can make noise. All we hear is them issuing queries here and there, but no results. Another said, Seraph Sabi Economics at all, instead of you to reach out to a sound economist to respond to the situation constructively and intelligently, you're coming with emotions. A begu. Another person wrote, Seraph always warning, no action. Now, next on what's trending, the special advisor to President Bola Tinubu on media and publicity, Ajuri Ingalale, has proceeded on an indefinite leave of absence. Ingalale said the decision was taken after significant consultations with his family over the past days as a vexatious medical situation had worsened. He made this known in a statement issued on Saturday to the president's chief of staff, Femi Badabia Mila. On Friday, I submitted a memo to the chief of staff to the president informing my office that I am proceeding on an indefinite leave of absence to frankly deal with medical matters presently affecting my immediate nuclear family, he said. While I fully appreciate that the ship of state waits for no one, this agonizing decision entailing a pause of my functions as a special advisor to the president on media and publicity, an official spokesperson of the president, special presidential envoy on climate action, and chairman presidential steering committee on Project Evergreen, was taken after significant consultations with my family over the past several days as a vexatious medical situation has worsened at home. I look forward to returning to full-time national service when time, healing, and faith permit. I respectively ask for some privacy for my family and I during this time, he added. Now responding to that, someone said, when money is no longer the problem, may health not fail us. Well, amen to that. Another said, at least, let's commend him. It's an honor for him to step down to take care of whatever situation he's going through. Another person wrote, may God be with you and your family and heal your family's medical situation. Health issues should never be mocked. And let's go on a quick break. We'll be back in no time. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's Newsfeed. Now, President Bola Tinubu did not extend the tenure of the Inspector General of Police, IGP, Kayode Ebetokun. This is according to the Nigeria Police Force, NPF, which said instead the president gave his approval to the law governing the tenure of the office as required. In a statement on Friday, Force spokesperson Muiwa Dejobi said the IGP's appointment is for four years. The attention of the Nigeria Police Force has been drawn to various misleading reports and misinterpretations concerning the tenure of the Inspector General of Police and wishes to categorically state that what President Bola Tinubu approved for the IGP is not an extension of tenor, but rather the proper application of the law governing the tenor of the office of the IGP, the statement read. Contrary to the misinformation being circulated on social media and in the news, an appointment letter in circulation was issued to the IGP shortly after his appointment was confirmed by the police council. Now, next on what's trending, the federal government has imposed a 15 naira deduction for every electronic money transfer of 10,000 naira and above affecting customers of fintech platforms such as Opay and MoneyPoint. The deduction, which is in line with the Federal Inland Revenue Service FIRS regulations, is set to take effect from September 9, 2024. The announcement was made by the fintech companies through notifications to their customers. In a statement, Opay informed its customers, their valued customers, Customers, please be informed that starting September 9, 2024, a one-time fee of 50 naira will be applied for electronic transfer of 10,000 naira and above paid into your personal or business account in compliance with the Federal Inland Revenue Service regulations. The company clarified that these deductions are part of the government's requirement and not a revenue stream for fintech companies. It is important to note that OPAY does not benefit from these charges in any way as it is directed entirely to the federal government, the statement added. Similarly, MoneyPoint, another major fintech platform, issued a brief notice stating, a 15 naira fee would be charged on inflows you receive of 10,000 naira and above from Monday, September 9, 2024. Your BRM is available to answer questions you might have. Now, responding to that, someone said, nothing new. 
there has always been stamp duty charge on transactions above 10,000 naira. It's possible the fintechs were bearing those costs for customers before now. Another said, have you not done enough? The torment and torture, is it not enough? Another person opined, it's okay, just keep withdrawing 9,500 naira. And the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edun, on Monday debunked reports during the round that the rate for value-added tax has been upwardly adjusted to 10% from 7.5%. The minister, in a statement signed by him, affirmed that the VAT rate as contained in relevant tax laws and chargeable on goods and services remains at 7.5%. The current VAT rate is 7.5% and this is what the government is charging on a spectrum of goods and services to which the tax is applicable. Therefore, neither the federal government nor any of its agencies will act contrary to what our laws stipulate. The tax system stands on a tripod, namely tax policy, tax laws and tax administration. All three must combine well to give us a sound system that gives vitality to the fiscal position of the government. Now, in Etienne said, something that will still increase. It's just a matter of time. Just watch out. Another said, this is a sign you need to know it will be increased soon. Another person opined, most of us are not convinced by the minister's statement. Why the sudden denial after rumors spread? Need more transparency on VAT rates and economic plans. Now, next one was trending. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, has issued an alert to Nigerians regarding the activities of a faith-based organization, Christ Mercy Land Deliverance Ministries, led by Prophet Jeremiah Fufengi. In a statement released on Sunday, NAFDAQ's Director General, Professor Mojishola Adeyeye, the agency claims the ministry is using its NAFDAQ name to mislead and deceive the public. It emphasized that none of the products being advertised and sold by the organization are registered with the agency. It said, NAFDAQ wishes to alert the public on the activities of a faith-based organization, Christ Mercy Land Delivery Ministries, that uses NAFDAQ's name to deceive the unsuspecting public. Recently, NAFDAQ has been inundated with petitions from concerned citizens about Senior Prophet Jeremiah Omoto Fufayin of Christ Mercy Land Delivery Ministries on a miracle water and miracle soap being advertised with healing and miracle claims and sold to unsuspecting members of the public by the spiritual ministry. The minister showcased the use of miracle water and miracle soap on social media to heal barrenness. He claimed that the women will carry twins if they use the soap. He openly told his congregation that the soap is NAFDAQ registered. Thus, the public began to visit the office to confirm the claims. Now responding, a netizen said, spiritual items doesn't need NAFDAQ approval. Another said, God bless very dark man. No wonder they didn't show up in court. Another person wrote, my question is, what are the penalties for selling items that are not registered by NAFDAQ and falsifying it to the masses that it was registered? The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has handed over 53 vehicles and a total of $180,300 stolen from Fraudster to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. These assets were stolen from Canadian citizens. The chairman of the commission, Ola Olukoyede, made the revelation during the handover of the assets in Abuja. He noted that out of the $180,300, U.S. dollars, the sum of 164,000 U.S. dollars was stolen from a Canadian woman, Elena Bogomas, in a romance scam, while 16,300 U.S. dollars was stolen from one Sandra Butler. Now, a netizen said, how do they know it was Canada that the money came from? Another person said, have they returned our ancestors they took during slavery? Another wrote, but can't return money politicians steal from Nigeria. Now, Angel, we direct me come Nigeria, I blame. And now to a funny compilation of kids be making their dads. Take a look. <laughs> And that's it. You're up to date to trending stories across the world. Follow us and subscribe to all our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X. Until next time, goodbye.